I was lucky enough to be given the opportunity to run a scratch date, which is a coding event run every May. I was quite pleased because we had a good turnout and the kids were really keen. Some had travelled quite far to be there, and so it was really pleasing to see how happy they were. However, it was during the break that Barry's parents came up to me and related to me that this was the first time Barry had ever wanted to go to any event. And furthermore, it was the first time he had ever agreed to speak in front of people. They thanked me profusely and said that they wished all schools could offer coding because he was bullied, incredibly introverted, and it was the only thing that he loved. And through coding, he'd found friends and a purpose. It's this escapism that speaks to me. When I was a kid, I was in that horrible situation where I was bottom of the class. Not only was I being bullied by the kids, but also the teachers were completely against me. In fact, on one occasion, the bullies bashed my head against the school building and then I was told off for playing dangerous games and punished again by the teachers. In hindsight, I'm pretty sure that programming and video games got me through my toughest days. I'm sure many teachers create classrooms that are sanctuaries for their students. The kind of classroom where students want to be. Computers and coding almost provide an extra layer to that because when students are fully engaged, it becomes its own little world where students have godlike powers to shape that world. However, for students to find their bliss in this world, there is a wall to climb. The joy of coding is that it is a fully consistent world. You get the same result every time. But it is a world where an extra bracket isn't glanced over, but will stop the program in its tracks. This challenge brings great joy when you finally debug that code, but also great frustration when you can't find that error. Teachers run the risk of making the steps so small that it's like drip feeding, with no joy of problem solving or create mountains so steep that they feel like Everest. Making a state of flow is the holy grail for every computing teacher. The paybacks for learning coding only start with escapism. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized just how many of my students are coming out of their shells thanks to coding. Just recently, I saw a student who was incredibly shy, not just speak to other students, but go across the city to lead a coding team. Another shy student wanted to help the Rohingya refugees and realised that even basic computing skills might help and so he set up an after-school club for them. The other less tangible benefit is that coders are problem solvers. These are the people that thrive on a challenge and love to solve problems in innovative ways. For example, my students are now using Raspberry Pis and some CO2 sensors to try and solve the problem of predicting pollution across Kuala Lumpur so the schools can judge when outdoor activities might need to be stopped and give PE teachers advanced warning. If students do become empowered, then a challenge becomes an opportunity to perform way beyond your expectations. My code club, I showed a trailer for the maze runner. It's a film where every night the maze changes and they send runners out to try and solve it. I thought it was a cute introduction for my coding club to make mazes and thought it would be, you know, a nice way for them to have a go. What I didn't bargain for was that one of my year nines would take this completely literally and make a maze that changed every single time you ran it. Let's be honest, none of the other coders could solve this challenge. I even put it out to other teachers in Southeast Asia. I got nothing back. However, it was a seemingly impossible challenge. I had to solve it, right? Bliss.